And right now I'm rejoined by Mike Triplett of the Times PQ and NOLA.com. Uh, do you foresee any hiccups as they make the changeover between now uh, Joe Vitt and Aaron Cromer? Well, I mean, I think it'll be smooth again, uh, going from one veteran assistant coach to another. They all know the drill. But, you know, Joe Vitt did a great job of, of you know, Sean Payton, was a, his presence was missed, but he was one guy, and they moved on with everybody else, and now you're missing another guy that they all leaned heavily on, plus Mickey Loomis, the general manager. So i, I got to imagine it's not going to be easy uh, to, to lose all three of those guys to start the season. But, you know, I do think they have a lot of great veteran guys who can step up. Aaron Cromer, we've talked a lot about in the past. Pete Carmichael, the offensive coordinator. Steve Spagnuolo, the defensive coordinator. And, and a veteran roster led by Drew Brees. So. Mike, what does it say about the system where you can yeah. like plug and play, basically, it, it, as you move along? Well, I'll tell you what, and we've written this about the Saints in the past, not a lot this year because it's been all gloom and doom with the Saints this offseason and this rogue program and, you know, dysfunctional organization, or, or at least that's how they're seen from the outside. But they have really built a foundation here that is right up there with the Patriots, the Steelers, you know, other teams like that. This is a great foundation in place. Stability success, you know, guys who know what they're doing and, and that they have a clear plan that they want to follow. You know, Sean Payton won't be there, but there will be the what would Sean do, what has Sean taught us to do, how has Sean done it in the past, and, and they all feel confident in following that blueprint. Do your job, right? Yeah. Uh, fascinating columns by both you and by Jeff Duncan as we look ahead uh, to the season game by game. Let's start with game one and the Redskins and how that game unfolds offensively as far as the Saints are concerned. Yeah, I, I did do a game by game breakdown, and, and in it I said I think anybody who hopped off the Saints bandwagon will hop right back on or be clamoring to get back on. I, I think in the Dome, week one, they've been chomping at the bit to do this, to get on the field and play football after this offseason. Um, I, not necessarily an indictment of the Redskins defense, but uh, I just think in the dome against a team that's not going to be able to match points with them yet with their rookie, with their rookie quarterback as good as he might be, I, I, I see 30-plus, potentially 40 points, one of those classic dome games where uh, you just see a lot of offense and, and you're reminded about what makes the Saints so special. Well, RG3, I think all of us agree, is going to be a special player. Yeah. But is he like Cam Newton, 422 yards, first game special? And defensively, how do the Saints deal with that? Well, yeah, and obviously what I think the Redskins would like to do is use him deceptively, you know, a little run pass, maybe some rollouts and some, you know, short passes and things like that. Uh, I think the Saints would love to put a lot of pressure on him to make him play catch up in his first game. So maybe it'll get up to 422 yards if he has to. But, uh, um, you know, we don't know what to expect from RG3, but I, I got to imagine this is just about the worst case scenario. He, he's not going to be able to come in and win this game 20 to 17. Yeah, it's going to be a little loud, you know, I would imagine, <laughs> as well. Uh, going further into the season, you have the Saints dropping five games, yeah. two of those under Aaron Cromer. Uh, do you think there's going to be a lot of growing pains with this coaching change and as they move through the first six and then move back over to Joe Vitt? Not necessarily. I, I expected, I purposely, I mean, if I went game by game, I could probably put the Saints at 14-2. and two. But, you know, I mean, even when things were going great last year, they have these lulls. Every team has a lull. You know, they right. had the game at St. Louis last year, the game at Tampa Bay. The year before, they did the same thing. So I purposely tried to find some spots where there are going to be some lulls. I didn't necessarily think about when they were Cromer and when they were Vit, but you know, I, I had them start in three and zero and then fall into three and two. Um, Cromer has the unfortunate job of leading them into Green Bay, and I think that team's just yeah, going to be fantastic kind of this brutal. year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know, and the other thing is, I also didn't want to pick losses every time they faced a quality opponent. They've got some tough road games at Green Bay, at Denver, at the New York Giants, at Atlanta, obviously, uh, at Dallas late in the year. And they rise to the challenge in a lot of those games. So I, I, I wanted to get to 11-5 and five eventually. There's a lot of those games. I could absolutely see them bring their best at Green Bay, at New York against the Giants. Certainly predicted them to bring their best at home against the San Francisco 49ers. I think that's one they're going to be really motivated for. Yeah. But there might also be those lulls where you know, just came off a dramatic win or a dramatic loss, and now they're playing at Oakland. Or, you know, I had them mm -hmm. losing in a home game against San Diego. Just every once in a while, I think there will be lulls in the schedule, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is 11 wins, 12 wins, or more. I still think this team, and especially this offense, is as potent as it was last year. I agree with you. Now let's get into the spoiler alert. You predict the Saints lose to the Packers in the NFC Championship game, but under what conditions do they go on to make it to the Super Bowl and become the first host team ever to host the Super Bowl at the Dome? 
Well, they could certainly do it. I, I mean, I, I like them as much as just about any team in the NFL outside of Green Bay. I mean, I, I really look at Green Bay as a team that is the most talented in the league and is hungry now. Same combination that made me pick the Saints to win the Super Bowl last year, and I came just short. I thought they were going to do it. I really right. did. But um, So I think Green Bay, but, you know, obviously the Saints are right there next to Green Bay, very close to them. Um, but you don't want to be playing that NFC Championship game at Green Bay. You don't really want to be going on the road and playing in the playoffs at Philadelphia, at New York, the Giants, uh, anywhere. So, I, yeah, I mean, the Saints would love to get a 13-win type of season that gets them at home, at least the one or two seed in the NFC. Uh, if they're hosting, they're winning, I think. Drew Brees, you can't say enough about this guy. Coming off a tremendous record-setting season last year, how does, he, how does he trump that, or, or can he? Yeah, I don't know if he can trump that. Um, I, I mean, I guess he can. He's going to try to. Uh, but whether or not he trumps those numbers or not, the guy is absolutely in his prime. Um, the one thing about him, last year they were on a roll in the second half of the season, and the same thing as their Super Bowl winning season where they were just jumping out to leads against teams. The other thing about him, though, is if they get down by 14 points, if that ever happens, you still count on him to come back and bring him back, you know. So sure. uh, I remember we, we saw the Houston preseason game, you know, where there were a ton of points recently. It reminded me of the regular season game where they did that. They just went into no huddle offense for, you know, a quarter and a half and, and came back. And so, uh, you know, even if the numbers aren't there, I, I certainly think the victories will be. All right, Mike. Well, thank you so much for coming by. We appreciate it. Glad you got through the storm okay. Oh, yeah. You know. <laughs> Hey, Glad mid, most of us did. Us yeah. Midwest guys, right? We know yeah. how to figure that stuff out. Exactly. <laughs> a little bit. Mike Triplett, Times Picking NOLA.com. Thank you so much for coming. As we mentioned, looking forward to your analysis all season long on Sunday nights throughout the campaign.